Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel, and as the title of the video suggests, today we're going to be talking about a couple games that really have nothing to do with each other, but more or less are doing something that I feel like Call of Duty has been lacking in for quite some time now, and again, they're not related by any sense, by company, by gameplay, any of that, but it's what they are that I think is, I don't think it will be the be-all, end-all of Call of Duty, but I think it'll definitely give it a run for its money. So, without further ado, let's get into it. First is X Defiant. This game just came out, and it's free. And at first it had server issues, but they fixed it within the end of the night, so it's already running a million times better, which is awesome. Uh, so let's get into it there's unranked and ranked which stick with unranked to start with and for modes there's escort which is where you either have to lead or stop this robot from getting to a certain point it's pretty basic and easy to follow the only issue is defending times for respawn is like five seconds whereas normal is two seconds when you're trying to get it to its destination zone control uh, which I really haven't played much of, but I think it's a hard point type deal, but not exactly, but we'll get into that. Domination is exactly what you would expect. It's three points, you want to try and capture all three and stop the enemy team from getting all three, and it's first to 250 wins, and it's super straightforward. It feels really fast paced though. Occupy, hard point. Same as Call of Duty. There's one point in the map, your team wants to hold it, and after a while, it'll move. Hotshot is... I think it's kill confirmed. I haven't been able to play it yet. I do have a decent amount of time in this game, but I haven't come across it quite yet. But it's what I'm assuming by watching the little picture down there and seeing him pick up emblems. Or you can just do the welcome playlist, which up to level 25, it's just the mosh pit of all of them and all the maps. But once you're at level 25, you do have to pick them separately. And now for the other things, there's a battle pass. Of course there is. It's a free game, so they needed some way to make money. And everybody buys battle passes these days, so this was a quick one. Next is the factions, which is really cool. You have the Cleaners, and the Phantoms, Libertad, Echelon, and DeadSec. And because this is a Ubisoft game, each one of these are from one of their respective games. You have Watch Dogs 2 with DeadSec, uh, I think it's Splinter Cell with Echelon, and then Far Cry 6 with Libertad, I can't read that, uh, but yeah, you get the gist, they're all Ubisoft owned games, and I wouldn't be surprised if down the line they add more factions from other games. Each faction is different in not only its characters, but also how it plays, like this is the one I prefer, and they're very fire heavy and damage heavy. And you have Phantoms, which I believe are more of a defense and kind of stop type of class. But every single one is very specific in how it plays and its little bonuses that it has. So you really can fix your own playstyle to the factions themselves, which is really cool. Loadouts, you're pretty basic stuff uh, that we've seen in Call of Duty for years. You pick a loadout, pick a couple weapons, which... I mean, honestly, off the rip in this game just starting, it's not a bad selection of weapons. There's a decent amount of them here. It's not too many, it's not too little, and the way you unlock them is also super nice, but again, I'll get into it. In devices are just your explosives, like your standard frag, flashbang, proximity mine, all that kind of thing. For attachments, same way as it's always been. As you level up, you get more attachments and that's really about it. Uh, but there is mastery camos, which you don't have prerequisites besides getting it to level 50, level 100, and level 75. And with each of those, you'll get that gun separate master camo. The only issue I think with this is it takes so long to level up the weapons. Now the store, exactly what you'd expect. Like the Fortnite store, the Apex store, where it's just different things you can buy. All cosmetic, not pay to win. Uh, and then this is where things get interesting. You have your player characterization, which is, this is what people see when you kill them. It'll be a little animation and a little background, which you can unlock. Emojis, which I'll talk about more in-game. And then challenges. 
Uh, for this one right here, it's the first challenge you see is 700,000 XP to unlock DeadSec, which is one of the factions, which I think is fair. You get to learn the other factions before you unlock this one, or you can just buy it for like 15 bucks. Weapon unlocks, I really like the system for this. It's not level based, it's using those classes to do certain things in order to unlock the other weapons in that class. And it varies depending on the class, but I really like that system. And it's the same runner up for devices. Use devices to do specific tasks in order to unlock the next one. And faction characters is within each faction you'll be given two challenges and you'll have to complete them to unlock the other faction characters. I just completed that one and I have no idea how the firebomb works so I don't have the second one I've been trying to figure out for the past couple games. No idea. But I really like how it's a challenge based system. This makes it feel like you're constantly doing something and you constantly have something to work towards which gives it a lot of replay value which for a game like this is super important. Now let's get into the gameplay. Right at the start they let you pick your faction and whichever tool you want for your faction and your loadout. Pretty basic stuff, it's very Call of Duty, but it's the same thing. And you get to see all your teammates, who they're playing as and what they're using, so once you get more equipped and comfortable with the game, you'll know how your team is going to play based on what tools your teammates are going into the game with. Uh, to start with, the graphics are really, really nice. I love how this game looks. It's it's that classic cartoon realism that Ubisoft does. That's really the best way I can think of to describe it. Like, it looks realistic, but it has this almost cartoony element to it. And before the gameplay really starts, keep in mind, I'm not great at multiplayer, okay? But which is why this game is so good, is because as terrible as I am at multiplayer, I still enjoy this game a lot. Even when I'm getting my butt handed to me, I'm having a good time. The gameplay is really smooth. I'd say the guns feel a little goofy, um, but this game launched two days ago. There's time to buff and nerf everything, and over time they'll find their footing for it and then it'll play better. And that's nothing on the game, that's just I'm not good at this kind of thing. But I enjoyed this a lot. And it has an arcadey like feel to it. It doesn't feel like with Call of Duty that feels very pushed in a way that I can't really explain like I don't enjoy Team Deathmatch and Free For All that much but I love this mode like this game it has a arcade feel to it kind of like Siege does when you play that uh, and it's very objective heavy and what I mean is every game mode is objective based granted in Call of Duty you can switch your playlist so that those are the only type of games you'll find but with this being this game at its core, it's what it's going to focus on, and it does it really, really well. I'm a huge objective player, more than I am, more than I go for kills, so that's that adds a big layer. Like, I might have 30 deaths, but I'll have the most time on the objective. I'm very objective heavy. And because of the challenges, like I said earlier, where you have to play different ways to unlock different characters and different weapons and utilities... It adds to that replay value that keeps this game staying fun. With Call of Duty in their system of... I mean, I know with battle passes now, if you don't unlock a weapon, there's a challenge. But with that being the basis in how to unlock everything, you constantly feel like you're pushing towards something. It's not just leveling up and there's another reward. You have to earn everything. And I think that that keeps that replay value heavy. The maps, in my opinion, from the ones I've played, super easy to understand. It feels like a combination of the classic three lane that Call of Duty has always had, but also kind of an openness to them. Uh, there might be multiple layers, there might be four paths, like, it's, it's, it's fresh, and it feels really nice. And getting off that point is, it feels like classic Call of Duty. And if you didn't know, that's because a lot of the developers from early Call of Duties helped work on this. And you can really feel it, and you can tell when you play it that that was the case, because it does. It feels like classic Call of Duty with these nicer graphics, and it's it's so much fun. I have had a blast with this game and the time that I have put into it so far, and I plan on putting more. Like, I deleted Call of Duty to make room for this, and I don't regret it. This game has... it's so fun. 
and there's even little things too like the emojis every time you die you have a choice of one of five emojis to like throw at the person and I do it almost every time I die whether it's just a simple one or I'm just being goofy and like throw a shocked emoji it's just it's a little thing that adds a little bit of spice to the gameplay that I actually I enjoy a lot more than I thought I would when it first started popping up and I was seeing it I do it constantly uh, but yeah that's that's this half of things I enjoy this more than the multiplayer in Call of Duty and have in years but that's not the only part of Call of Duty that needed fixing that another game has done for it so let's get into the second game Scare Ritual is a game I've been following for quite some time now and a game I'm sure you've heard of to this point because people are calling it the Call of Duty Zombies Killer. I don't necessarily think it's that, but at the moment, it's looking like it. And like, <laughs> There's a lot of things this game offers right off the rip. And this one isn't free, but with all the stuff it offers, I'd say it makes up for having to put a little bit of money into this one. And it being its own thing entirely, uh, like for up upgrades, it's the same kind of Call of Duty Cold War system that we saw with the zombies perks. Uh, there's only five right now, but masks, which you unlock in the past, which I'll get into in a little bit, are just different ways for your character to stand out because you are all the same character, but this differentiates it when you play online. And there's a lot of options. Emblems, same as Call of Duty just a character emblem uh, menu backgrounds which is huge I don't know why <laughs> I like this so much but it's a really nice touch these are different voices again to also kind of separate you from other players while you're online uh, and then music which is just menu music which again not a huge deal but nice that they added it I really like that uh, and then they have miracles which every two rounds in game you'll be given a random miracle and you can have six I think but it's all random and then if it pops up again well you already have it you'll get the next rarity in it which makes it better and these vary from better critical hit chance to lowering the cost of items to making you melee quicker there is a lot of different things to make each game feel unique and make it stand out and be its own game uh, each one of these they do kind of have a running theme though depending on which one it is uh, my favorite is the cat because that's a lot of the stuff in there is OP. You have Dread Levels now, which every 10 levels that you advance, there's Emblem Rewards and occasionally a Mask. All the Masks are the same, they just grow upon each other. And then you have uh, the Stats, which, same as always, it shows you what you've done, what you've accomplished, and how fast you've completed Easter Eggs, which is a really cool thing that they have in there. And it makes you want to speedrun and replay each map. Uh, artifacts which you find along the map and it's all just pictures and dialogue and text but if you don't have some it tells you where to find it and like which map it is in and how to find it whether it's in a specific location or it's dropped from an enemy it tells you how to get it which is super nice for people who like to collect everything and then tutorials which you know what tutorials are um, not to mention uh, this game does a lot of things right, like the passes. Uh, this is what I was getting at before. There's four battle passes in heavy quotations, but they're all free. And you can switch between them as you please. And you can start with one, finish it, go to the next, which is what I'm doing. But there's no time limit. There's no specific order you have to do them in. You do them at your leisure with whichever one you like the best. And that is so cool. That adds to the same type of replay value that X Defiant has with its challenges. It, there's constantly something for you to work towards if you're finding yourself enjoying this game a lot. And like, I started with the bottom one because not only was that my favorite pass, it was also my favorite map. And there's no advantage to picking a pass and playing its specific map, it's just how far you get, what difficulty you choose, all that. But it's, it's such a nice touch because it makes it feel classic in a way like old games used to be not to mention how generous they're being with their post-launch drops in June and October 
they will be releasing not only another zombie map, but those maps come with Easter eggs, additions to the hardcore Easter egg that's currently in the game already, Easter egg music, their own wonder weapons, another perk, free. And the next one launches in June, and the following will be October, but the fact that they're giving it to us for free says so much about the company. And there's not even microtransactions in this game. It's it's all free. Like, they're just, they're being generous. And like, little touches they pay attention to, like that right there, the colored perks, that wasn't on launch. On launch, whenever you got a perk upgrade in the game, it was just the perk icon, but it was white. That came in like a day after the game launched, and it's not huge, but it it's something to show they're paying attention to the little details. Now when you play, you can do solo, private match with friends, or matchmaking. I stick to solo, because I'm still getting familiar with the whole game. And then there's four maps to choose from. And when you pick one, you get all these different difficulties, each with their pros and cons. Like, as it gets easier, um, you'll earn a little bit less XP, but the zombies, or the, the quiet ones as they're called, will run faster, or run slower, <laughs> do less damage, things cost less. Uh, but if you play harder, you'll get more XP, but they also get harder and faster a lot quicker. And once you go past normal, the normal zombies also get added abilities for some reason. It's It gets nuts really quick the second you step past normal. Like, you'll have standard quiet ones that are just supposed to smack you throwing fireballs at you. Out of these four maps, this one right here is my favorite, and so that's going to be the gameplay in the background. Now to start with, with each map, it has its own little cutscene that it plays before you start, which, it's not a big thing, but like the perk color thing, I love it. Now, each map has a beautiful map design, like you can tell a lot of care went into them, and with each map, they feel like their own thing. It doesn't feel like they're taking from each other, it doesn't feel like anything's dropped, like copied and pasted. They all feel very new and very different and very unique, and that's a, such a nice thing. Now, the easter egg steps for casual players are always listed in the top corner. That's something that I think is a really cool, t like, nice step. We saw this in World War II Zombies, and a lot of people had a big kerfuffle over it. Um, but that's just the standard easter egg. There is a hardcore easter egg, which does not give you any direction whatsoever, and that's for the hardcore players. Which, again, is a nice touch to have that option for once you've completed them. I've done all of them. Uh, I did complete the first one in the demo instead of the actual game, but I do plan on going back and doing that. But so there's rewards and play types for everybody, and it feels like everybody got attention when it came to this game, and that's so nice to see. Uh, next is uh, zombie variations. So in this game, they're technically called quiet ones, uh, but there is a lot of different variations that you'll see while you're playing, and it also varies depending on the map. Like the Baylor right here, he is kind of this map's Think of it as like a Brutus, in a way, where he shows up when you do certain things. Granted, it's not round specific, but he does show up time to time. And I think the reason it's not round specific is because in this map, you actually, through the Easter egg quest, fight each of the map's bosses, which is, <laughs> it's nuts. <laughs> uh, next is the side objectives. There are little side objectives that'll pop up here and there as you make your way around the map that will tell you to stop a machine, which is you just find a generator and shoot it till it explodes, and then stop the Elite Maker, which is another one that's very similar, um, but there are vents you have to shoot out, and when you do that, then you win the objective, but if you fail, it sends a monster after you that you then have to take out. But if you complete the, the side objectives, you get a bonus 2,000 points which can certainly come in handy in this game, especially with the way that you get zombie points, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. And another cool thing about each map in this, and I think I touched on it when I said the free maps they're bringing, every map has its own wonder weapon. And they're very easily accessible through the Easter eggs. And you don't have to complete the Easter eggs to get them. I know Treyarch's done it in the past with wonder weapons, where a couple steps in you can get them. Like, I know Alpha Omega was like that. Uh, 
and five was like that or was it classified one or the other and then you have mob of the dead but you see my point they're very accessible some a lot earlier than others but they're all really really cool like one of them is uh like this map for instance the wonder weapon on this is a sword like a whole sword that you just get another one is a gun kind of like the wonder Wolf, that shoots out tesla coils and it's super op uh i'm trying to remember the other ones i haven't played all the maps a ton i've played this map more than any of the others i really like this one <laughs> Uh, but they each have their own wonder weapon, and on top of that, you can just pop that bad boy in the pack-a-punch. Like, you don't even, you can do other stuff to upgrade it, like, differently. But you can just throw it in the pack-a-punch if that's how you want to do it. Now the perks list. Perks are very standard to what we've seen in other Call of Duties, at least the ones that are in right now. You have Juggernog, Speed Cola, Stamina Up, Electric Cherry, and Double Tap. And you do technically have Quick Revive, but that's different. Uh, those are called Life Tokens, and you have to receive them at very specific locations. And then if you get down, it's kind of like a who's who type screen, but the quiet ones won't hit you. You have to find a coffin around the map and put in your Life Token, and you're back to life. I don't know if they're limited, as if you've been around the channel, you know I don't buy Quick Revive when I play by myself. Same thing goes for, the, for this. You automatically get a life token, but the second I lose it, I don't buy another one. I just keep playing. Uh, now, um, for the Pack-a-Punch itself. So, for that, how it works is the first Pack-a-Punch will always be 5,000. Well, unless you're playing on the harder difficulties, but let's... You're playing on a normal difficulty, the f base price is 5,000. And then once you pack a punch once, it goes to 15,000. And then again, 30,000. And then I think 45. And then 60. Um, and because of how you earn points in this game, it takes a long time. But it adds to that level of grind for you to want to level it up and see just how strong it gets. With not to mention, even on the easier difficulties, the enemy's health and damage spikes really rapidly towards like the 15 to 20 range so you're gonna want to do that like it doesn't even become an option after a while because they become absolute bullet sponges but again i like that pack-a-punch system it feels like a perfect blend of classic pack-a-punch and the way that advanced warfare did it with the 25 tiers but you don't earn points as much you so for critical hits or critical kills you get 115 points and for standard kills, you'll get between, I think it's 90 and 100. You don't get it for every bullet, so think of it more like Cold Wars and like Modern Warfare 3's point system. Where it's not necessarily every bullet or every knife, but the kill itself gives you the points. Power-ups, you have... Um, I'm trying to remember all of them, but there's max ammo, infinite ammo, which we've seen before... Half price, which is super nice, which makes everything on the map half its price for 30 seconds or so. And then triple points instead of double points, which again, with how the point system works in this game, is really nice, and it helps a lot. And then sudden death, which is insta-kill. Like right there, that's the half price. And honestly, the only issue I have with this game... I think the point system a little bit. I think if that were adjusted so that things like pack-a-punching to max tier didn't take 25 rounds, then it'd be better. Um, but like gameplay-wise, occasionally, when things get super crowded and there's elemental zombies throwing stuff at you and a big dude in the other side of the room charging at you, you'll see frame rate dips, but they're not so big that it crashes or disrupts the gameplay it's just they're noticeable dips here and there but again nothing too terrible and overall if you know it's definitely something i would give a try like i said the easter egg anybody can do them they tell you how and where to go it's the hardcore easter egg that you have to find out on your own each map has a super cool boss battle uh i think this one even though this is my favorite map i think this is one of the weaker boss fights I think that the sewer level has the best boss fight in my opinion. 
that one is awesome. <laughs> like, that one's a lot of fun. But I feel like this is a zombies mode that anybody could pick up and play. And it just, the theme to it, the aesthetic, it all looks so awesome. And because of the passes, it has that replay that zombies really hasn't lately. It's more than just level up. It's survive this long so you can get these things to max out your perks, find the artifacts, you know, pay attention to the story because every map has a starting and ending cutscene. And if you goof like I did and you beat this one first, then you ruin the end of the story for yourself. So I kind of just <laughs> went backwards and just did like an elfin lied situation, you know. I started at the end of the story and worked my way to the beginning. But the story itself is kind of cool, and it, you know, I won't give spoilers away for it, I was about to, but I won't. It is connected to Made of Scare, which is the predecessor to this, which is such a cool touch. Obviously, it, you know, they were probably going to in some way or another, but it was just so cool for them to actually do it. I, I, I loved that game, so I was like pooping myself during that scene. Now, again... Do I think that either one of these are necessarily the be-all, end-all to Call of Duty? No. Call of Duty is going to pump games out for the rest of our lives. You know, because it's just going to go from developer to developer. More people are going to join. And they're just going to keep pumping out games, no matter how good or bad they are. And with Xbox now saying that they're putting it on the Game Pass, all the more reason for them to keep going. Because where they're losing money there... People are going to be able to see the gameplay that haven't bought it that much earlier. And it's just going to have more people wanting to buy it. Because, as silly as it sounds, people are going to be looking to that for the gameplay. This might even boost Xbox sales, for all we know. Like, none of us know how that's going to play out. But I'd say that's a good guess. But I just wanted to say make this video because I've enjoyed both of these things and their respective modes, then I've enjoyed those modes in actual Call of Duty for a long time. But it's also unfair to compare them to Call of Duty when they're very much trying to be their own thing. And I think they're both doing amazing at that. But yeah, I, at the end of the day, I don't think it's going to kill Call of Duty, but I do think it's going to give it a run for its money. Both of those things respectively. Especially with however Gulf War ends up turning out. If it's garbage, people might still be playing Scare. If the multiplayer is trash, people might still be playing Defiant. It's free. So, that's a big one up they have already. So, yeah. Let me know what you guys thought in the comments. I know this video is a lot longer than the stuff I usually put out. But, occasionally, I do want to try to do this kind of thing. Because this type of work for these videos feels good. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you guys think about both these games, or Call of Duty, or anything in the comments. Because I'm curious to see. Put a lot of work into this one, so... I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you're having a good day. If you're watching early on, have a good rest of your day. I will see you in the next one. And until then, you know what? Keep just doing your own thing. If you like Call of Duty, stick to Call of Duty. There's nothing wrong with that. If you like these games, stick to them. Or, you know what? Get in the pot and play a little bit of both. Nothing wrong with any of those things. But, uh, yeah, let me know your comments, and, uh, see ya!